So guess what? We've just driven out of Penang Island just to later travel back into the <laughs> island uh, using a different vehicle. Yep. Why yep. does this sound kind of familiar? Nope, it's not familiar at all. First time, I guess. First time. I kind of feel like we've done this before. And is it even worth the traffic? Ah. Uh... Of course we have done that before, right? Uh, episode 2, uh, coming true. Uh, if you haven't watched it, go and watch it now. And we're now at the ferry terminal. Check out all these cars lining up to board the ferry. This is yet another first for me. I've definitely been on a ferry before, but I've never been inside a car inside a ferry. Napa? Okay. Man, today burn. Apparently they're having some problem on ferry, the schedule thing. They're gonna put it on it, which is that's not something I wanted because we want to experience the sunset on the ferry. So yep, we have bought it and uh, we will come back one more day. Hey, it sounds like they've screwed up! <laughs> We drove out of the island for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Not exactly. At least now you have good footage of them coming back through the old bridge to Penang Island. And they got rewarded by this beautiful, <clears throat> yes, nice, beautiful evening sunset. And of course, to compensate that, the producer had something in mind for them. Special one. So we didn't get to bring our cars onto the ferry and cross over so we came all the way out here to the beach to hopefully look at a few boats and make us feel a bit better. Come on! Nah, I just I really Good, wanted right? to be on that ferry. Ferry? Yeah. Nah, I make you something better. Come here, come, come, what come, up? come, 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 come. Oh! See, I told you! Nobody said anything about flying over the ocean! Welcome to Mission Instagrammable, the series where two clueless dudes with cameras show you how to stay on top of your Instagram photography game at the most insta woody spots in Malaysia. And I'm Narrator! I'm back from a nice little holiday. Hey, no claps on me, uh. seriously. Uh. Come on. This is too romantic for two guys. <laughs> it's a bit close. Oh, gay? Mm. <laughs> because the last episode is just something too ordinary. Let's put on something. It's a pretty nice view, and the breeze is very nice. <laughs> All right, welcome to Mission Instagramable episode four. four. And we're still in Penang, and in this I'll episode, be a bit higher in the skies. <laughs> in this episode, what are we gonna talk? Raw versus JPEG. <laughs> I'm surprised I can still think about that up here. Yes, woohoo! And here they are dangling in the air above the ocean overlooking Batu Ferengi. Ain't that cute? Hmm, when is my turn? What format to shoot in? Everybody knows you can shoot JPEG and you can also shoot RAW using the cameras nowadays, but should you? And why should you? <laughs> and we are getting higher and higher. <laughs> This is something. It's like looking at drone footage but with your very own eyes and it's not footage, it's real. Whoa. Human drone. Ah, uh, this is our POV. Point of view. Not everything goes according to plan, but we make do. Yep. And it's, uh, Malaysia's a beautiful country, I'll give you that. If you're going to Penang, you definitely have to check out Batu Fringi because of its beautiful sunsets every single day. Except for today. They know we are filming, so they just don't want to give us the best sunset possible. So thank you, Sky. You just know that we're gonna film today, huh? Sweet Lan! How's that? <laughs> not bad. Pretty fun. How's my hair? I'm not sure the we all tell you where is this or not. This is Batu Dude, Fringi of course, Penang. Huh? It's uh, if you're in Penang Island. Sorry, so I've just flooded. <laughs> the sun is set. We're not planning to take any photos here. Yeah. And uh, we are a bit hungry, no? Real hungry, especially if you're dragged along a boat somewhere up in the air. Dangling let's too? Let's get some Penang food, shall we? Yep, let's do it. Now, discount up down funk. These clueless dudes bring you into the heart of Penang. Cue that cool transition. <laughs> this is Chula Street, where it is the best place to experience lots of local food. Take it away. Lorong Chulia. That's Chulia Street. It's one of the most famous places in Penang to come to find street food. 
Yes, I want to eat chak kway teow. No I want to eat, yep, uh, Pinay uh, Laksa. All the local street food that you can possibly want, this is where we call Chulia, Chulia Street Night Market. I, I, I want to eat already. Let's okay. go. Yep, so we will shoot some photo during our food hunting session. Shoot and roll. Roll plus JPEG. You might be wondering why everything is being played backwards. Nope, it's not the editor's fault, it's a creative decision. Because someone watched Tenet, and if you guys know what Tenet is, the movie is amazing. It's by Chris Nolan, and then this shot has nothing to do with Chris Nolan, but look, that bicycle guy looks absolutely cool. More. But the real question is, if you understood the film because if you do it won't bring sake to your table uh, but if you do not uh, it, it, it's a uh, it's a chris nolan film now okay man i'm absolutely starving passing by all this food but before we actually go ahead and eat dinner at last let's get one burning question out of the way what exactly <laughs> is a raw photograph like how can a picture be raw yep i saw something the rojak. Yep. You see that delicious roja there? Yep. Yeah. This is the I, I this is the one of the thing I could think of to, you know. Oh best example? Yeah, best example. You see, when you order a roja, it comes ready with all the sauce and everything on top. Yep. Which means you can't change much. Okay. They make it for you. Yeah, that's the German. Okay. But if you order a roja, it comes the sauce separately for okay. you to mix and match yourself. Okay, that could that's be an it. if. So you could put more of something or less of something and then yes. the whole rojak is actually tailor-made to your taste. Yeah, you adjust your highlight, your shadow, your white balance. That is okay. a raw. Nice, okay. But speaking of the rojak, can we go back and order Let's get one? one more. One yeah, was not enough. Let's, the, get one. Let's, yeah, let's yeah, get yeah. one. Let's get one. Let's get one. You might be wondering, mm, why are the shots here so shaky and crap? Well, the cameraman crew are so hungry, they didn't care, they just shoot and go anyway. I mean, just look at that, you see? Ice kacang, you see? Ice kacang, wow, Okay, okay, back to the studio. The ice kacang is damn nice. Man, that ice kacang was really nice. I would really want to have some more right now, but I don't think we have any around here. Yeah, and so sorry we didn't get much of the food photos <laughs> for you. Yeah. yeah, we didn't really show you guys too much because we didn't want to torture you guys too much. So we yeah. just kept the food images to a minimum and kept it to ourselves. So long you go to the street, Surya, you get everything you want there. Yeah, but we're not at Julia anymore. We're back in the studio in front of our computers because we're going to talk about what happens after you shoot your raw photos. What do you do with them? You can look at them at the back of your camera, but like any raw photo, if you want to properly develop those photos edit and them. edit them, turn them into even nicer photos, you will most likely want to do that on a computer using some sort of specialized software. Yeah. When you buy a camera, typically the camera manufacturer would we'll include you, yeah. with the camera some sort of software to handle the raw files. For example, on Canon, Canon cameras, yeah. yep, you, you get, get that DDP. Uh, DDP software. Yeah, and for Sony cameras, they bundle you a modified version of Capture One called Capture yes. One for Sony. But most professional photographers, they would invest in one software that they would use for pretty much all of their raw yeah. workflow. So they're really familiar with that software and they would use that software to edit a raw photo on any camera they shoot with. Adobe is a big winner. They got Photoshop, Lightroom. Photoshop, yeah. Lightroom as well, they're both the raw go-tos. The difference between Photoshop and Lightroom, more photographers use Lightroom yep. for their workflow is because Lightroom batch. can handle a whole batch of photos. Yeah, it's yeah. in a, it's organized in a catalog. Photoshop is more of a photo by photo yes. basis. You work on one photo at a time. Lightroom allows you to work on many photos at a time. Another crowd favorite is probably Capture One. It's sort of an alternative to the Photoshop and Photoshop Lightroom options. But Capture One is the sell software is okay, so long they know the software will do. Yeah, uh, you're not gonna. These talk are the about, options. You're not gonna talk eight hour here. People are getting boring with us. So, the next morning in Penang. Good morning, Georgetown. Welcome back to this beautiful city. And today we'll be going to a very special place because this place is very special. That's why it is a special place. 
I'm going to get fired after this. This is Chew Jetty, and it's probably the world's most chill Jetty. <laughs> Okay, 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 okay. And if sources are right, this place is about a hundred years old. We have different people from different walks of life, walking different lanes of different lanes. This is very chill. Oh yeah. It is. Look, she's sitting down to chill. These two need to chill, huh? I'm telling you, huh? Why? Why got Korean one? Hey, uh, Anyway, this is by far the most chill place. I did again. Hey, you mentioned about the difference between Roy and Jetpack. Like yes. How big is that exactly? Yeah, we did say that there's a pretty big difference between Raw and JPEG, but how big exactly is that difference, you ask? Well, typically, JPEGs are <laughs> saved as 8-bit <laughs> files. Yeah, but we're not, we're not going to go too in-depth on what bit yeah. depth is in this video, but all you need to know is JPEG photos are saved as 8-bit files, and Raw photos are typically saved as 14-bit files. Yeah. Now, it may not sound like that big of a difference, but it's actually a huge difference. 64 times, in fact. Okay. Yep. So if we're talking about levels of brightness, a JPEG 8-bit image can contain up to 256 56 shades of brightness, but a raw photo at 14 bits, guess how many? I'm going to read from a number yeah, here. Yeah, it's yeah, a yeah. big number. 16. 16,384 shades of brightness. Okay, okay. Now, there's more. If we're talking about colour information, an 8-bit JPEG photo can contain up to 16.7 million colours. Million. Million. Right. Okay, sounds like a lot, but a 14-bit RAW file can contain, get this, just under 4.4 trillion colours. If we're talking about a multiple of a difference, that is a 262,144 time difference. Boosh! Enough. Massive. Enough. So enough. many numbers. Enough for the numbers. <laughs> Under Hosan say number is just not right. It's not going to anyone's brain, but I can take photo under Hosan. I can Hossan. show you. Yeah, not we'll say number under Hosan. Yep. Okay, let me do it. Jetty. This Chu is like a Chinese family name, isn't it? The last name. The last name, Chu. Yep. yep. So does this belong to like the Chu family or something? Uh, the people who live on this bridge, particularly okay. this bridge, I mean, which is Chu Jetty, which means they are they're having the same last name, Chu. Okay. Then they have more. Oh, okay. According, Other last names. Yeah, according to my data collection, <laughs> <laughs> it's Google. around <coughs> six bridge here. There's Lim, Yong, Tan, Lee, Chiu, and one last is the mix, which means okay. everyone, I mean, oh, uh, a common last. one. Yes. Nice. So there's multiple bridge here, and uh, see if we can make, make it there. Yeah, let's Some check out the other ones. Maybe look better, I don't know. Who knows? Yeah. This girl's hot.
right? All right, guys, a quick question. Yep. So you say the, the raw file contains more data. So how big is the file size? Okay, um, well, with more data, of course, comes bigger file sizes. They're actually significantly bigger when you compare a raw file size to a JPEG file size. But no worries, it's nowhere near as big of a difference as the amount of information it contains. It's usually about five times bigger. Yes. Five, five times or more, depending on what camera you shoot on and whether or not they compress the raw file before saving yes. it. But all you need to know is when you shoot raw, do keep in mind that it will take a toll on your memory cards a bit faster than JPEGs. So bear that in mind, bigger file sizes for sure. Get more memory card, get more hard disk. And we want to get more food now. Sam yes. ordered for us already. Uh, here it's a very unique Mamak stall. They can make you special thing. Uh, I think he's planning to surprise this us. This one? Yeah, I'm not sure in a, in a good or bad way, but let's see. If you're in for the best cuisine, look no further because this is it. This is Roti USA, Roti Hong Kong. So, American bread and Hong Kong bread. It's a very interesting representation. So we've got two rotis named after two different countries, but the true highlight is something called Roti Christmas. Like, am I expecting a Christmas tree kind of roti or... Um, is that it? Is that it? The timing is too perfect on this one. That's a very colorful roti. Roti Christmas. What's that? This is Roti Christmas. This is Roti Christmas. It kind of looks like a Christmas tree, I guess. A little less green than I thought, but plenty of color. Um, definitely never ever seen anything quite like this before. First. Is that cheese? It's a cheese that represents what? triangle. Why you so use the cheese and the highest sauce? Strawberry. 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 What the? Hi, I don't get it. What? Oh my god. Come on, you must be kidding me. Uncle Ross, you want to die, right? But then the Elon's. Oh man. This is. Sacrilegious. It's a sacrilegious combination of sweet and savory. That's the word I'm using to describe. Sacrilegious. <laughs> it's time to taste this mother. I'm a little afraid to try this stuff now. <laughs> First, you rip it off gently. Okay. Um, got a bit of the red stuff, white stuff, the roti, and a huge chunk of cheese. Here goes nothing. You put the cheese in your mouth with the strawberry. <laughs> I'm very confused. It's sweet, it's cheesy, and it's quite spicy. It's everything happening at once. It's my niece and nephew dying inside. I'm usually a huge fan of roti tissue, but... I don't know, this is something new. I'm just processing it. I'm very not used to this. I won't say I don't like it though. Just now you try the cheese and the oh, yo, you try what? Quick little down. There's bread, there's sausage, there's chicken, and there's banana. Why banana? I don't know. The banana hits you first among everything. This is really wrong. Banana does not go well with egg, I'll give you that. But you know what, I'll say something nice about this. It's a unique taste. If you want to taste something like you've never tasted before, try a combination like this. An add-on for you. For those who are foreigners, not Malaysian, you taste it, you might not feel as strong as us. But if you are Malaysian, you taste this, I'm sure something will hit you. This is wrong. <laughs> and this is where you experience the best Penang cuisine in hey, the mama. Hey, uh, you shut up lah. You don't tell people wrong info. Uh, voice over. The very next morning, Jay's decided to wake up early. He drove all the way to the other side of the island where he saw this. A beautiful town with a historical person on a wall. Legend has it that he flew into the wall at Mach 2 and ever since, he's stuck there. 
That was fake information, alright? Don't believe everything on the internet. Hey, Jace! Jace! What? You wake me up at 7 in the morning, we drive one hour all the way to the other side of Penang, and you bring me to a little laksa stall. Yes, have to. Laksa is the best in Penang. All the way on the other side? Everyone come to Penang for Asam Laksa, right? Okay. So, uh, some have their own flavor, what? Kocha, Bi Asam yeah, Laksa, yeah. Aita Asam Laksa, mm -hmm. but mine is this one. You must try. Just so happens to be an hour's drive away. It's the best. And, hmm. uh, but before you can test this, it's the best. You got to answer one question that many people are asking. Okay. Is that worth to shoot raw over JPEG if you don't edit any photo? I mean, okay. you are no SOOC person. Just straight out of camera people. Like, yeah. is it necessary to drive an hour's journey all the way to the other side of Penang Island for a bowl of laksa if you weren't planning to have laksa anyway? Hold that thought. Okay, okay. Laksa too, Andy. Thank you. I completely take back everything I said about driving way too far for this. Like, this is... Say sorry. I apologize for any mean comments I may have made about drive. I'm really sorry about the false accusations about Answer driving too far. Okay. Shoot you, still shoot raw, if you're not planning on editing. Basically, no. <laughs> Well, you see, modern digital cameras nowadays, they have a lot of inbuilt image processing already done for you, and that's applied to the JPEG images. Yep. For example, Fujifilm, they've got the most excellent film simulations yep. in the industry. And everyone loves Canon Color. Exactly. So, technically speaking, if you're not planning on editing your photos later on, it wouldn't really make sense to shoot raw, unless, of course, you suddenly change your mind. Yeah, if you have more than enough memory card, why not shoot both? You keep the raw first, and if you found really unuseful when you go back, mm -hmm. you can just delay after. Yeah, let it sit for a bit. If Let's you assume cannot... the case you are rich enough to buy more memory card. If you've got extra storage lying around, yeah. I think I already answered the question. Put it down. Enjoy. I would drive back and up down again for this again. Just like how the historical man drove himself into the wall. It's Asam free. Laksa, the one you're having over there, is a dish that our friend Locke cannot handle. <laughs> he didn't like it. Kai likes it though. He comes to Malaysia and asks for asam laksa. I give him. He, oh. he likes most Malaysian food, but asam laksa is not one of them. He likes curry laksa. He likes curry laksa. Fun fact. So since we made the long drive over here to this side of Penang, might as well check out the local area surrounding it. As somebody who personally grew up in the city, every time I step into a kampong like this, kampong is local speak for village, it's always so remarkable how they've kept everything pretty much exactly the same for so many years. And as we were driving into the village, behind me is a very iconic roundabout. It stands out so much amidst the village, now, this is actually a very historical roundabout. It's been around since the 18th century. Back then, this was the town's public pump. That's where you brought your horses and elephants to drink out of. Nowadays, it's sitting on top of the roundabout, and it's actually a very iconic roundabout as well. It's the only roundabout in the village, and it connects the three main roads that run through here. So we just drove past quite essentially what is a piece of history. And when there's history, there is Jay's in his natural habitat behind the lens, documenting history in an Instagrammable way. Of course lah, this is not National Geographic ma, right? This is all about Instagram ma, right? So while we were walking through the village, 
This locksmith over here really caught our eyes because in front of the shop here were three photographs and a really nice uncle here, he's the owner of the shop, he was really telling us about how things were back in the days and when these photos were taken. This one here was taken back in June 1953 while Malaysia was still under Britain's rule. This was over in 1885 and this, very iconic, 1957, this was during Malaysia's independence. And this locksmith, I believe, has been around for very, very long. The uncle told us it's been operating since before he was born, so I can only imagine how long it's been around. And the fact that it's still open for business today, it just really hit me quite hard because it's almost like times haven't changed at all. Traveling to the next Instagrammable spot not far from this town, we'll find something else that hasn't changed at all. Jay's tendency to bring you off-roading! <laughs> Seen the scene before in movies. This is the paddy field from Interstellar. Of course, they use a cornfield loud, like, eh? This is Malaysia. And that is Tars. With a bit of a makeover. But I must say, the makeup artist did a great job. in the middle of a paddy field and there is something really out of place behind us. Look is that. that a mural? <laughs> and it's painted on a container. Yep, three and containers. Ten stood. Yeah. Side by side. And not only one painting, behind that there's another one. And there's total ten painting on five installation all around Penang. And the cool part is one of the murals is done by our friend Kenji Chai. Definitely check it out at Jerutong. Yep, that's his. If you guys want to check out the rest of the container murals, here's a list of them. Go check it out. Seriously, it's cool. This is just one of them in Balet Pulau. And we find ourselves particular like this. Yeah, because it stands out so much against the paddy field. It's just so out of place, it's really cool. If you pass by this, you definitely want an Instagram photo of it. Just so happens we're both going to be shooting raw photographs this time around because one of the edges raw photos give you is it has an Extra. increased dynamic range yes. over JPEGs. But it's not something you can see right away from the back of your camera, can it? No. There's some and you procedure. Can't here either. Yeah, there's some processing and procedure required. And I think there's two fellas very comfortably sitting in an air conditioned room, not in the blazing sun. Back to the studio. Oh, the aircon's really cold. Yeah. Can we turn it down? Yeah, thanks, <laughs> thanks. So we're back here in the studio in front of our computers again to talk about dynamic range. Here's a few photos that we shot that exposure-wise were kind of tricky. Yep. We have a photo that's quite underexposed. The background is exposed correctly, but subject. our subject yeah. is very, very dark. Now here we have another photo that is overexposed. It's yes. kind of blown out. So we shot both RAW and JPEGs for this. So let's see what we can actually do. With this RAW photo here, I'm just gonna bring up the shadows. It's as easy as pushing up on this slider. And we've already recovered some of that. Yep. If I want to go even further, I can lift the exposure, yep. say by about one stop, and push those highlights Highlight. back down. It's and become look, a HDR photo. It's it, not, look, not going to look good. It doesn't but, look very good, but point is, look at how much detail we were able to recover. Now, if I do the same to the exact same photo, yeah, we should but roll JPEG, JPEG. Yeah. you see, it's already... It's falling apart. Yeah. It's blocky, it's noisy. Sure, the raw one is slightly noisy as well, but when you compare it to the JPEG, it is a world's difference. Let me just zoom that out for you. You see? Look at that. The dynamic range is just a huge difference. Yeah, and it's a bit more shocking if we look at this one. Yep. So this one is completely blown out. I would say by about two stops. 
if we just go to the exposure slider on the raw photos hill and pull it down there we go you have everything <laughs> it's fixed perfect yeah. easy or i could have done it the other way and just brought down the highlights simple as well now you can see the sky and it's still blue and all even the cloud there yeah you can even see the clouds if we do the same to the JPEG, let's just bring the exposure down. I bet nothing happened. Yes. Nothing. It just turns into this weird grey. Yep. There is nothing going on. I can pull down the highlights as well. Not helping much. So yes. that's how big of a difference shooting RAW, raw makes. Model. Especially when it comes to dynamic range. Yeah. While we're at this, there's one more cool thing about RAW photos. When you shoot a RAW photo, the white balance or yep. color temperature is not deep. actually baked into the image. It's just a number that's recorded, yes. saved in the metadata somewhere. So if, say, your color temperature is off, it's not really off here, but I'm just going to show you anyway. If we head on over here, under the white balance tab, I can just change the color temperature to anything I want without reducing the image quality. Yep. Sure, I can do the same to a JPEG, JPEG as well, but it usually changes the whole color science of the image. It's the more like a color filter. Yeah, it's more like the, a color filter. Yeah. You're throwing away some color information there and it you're doesn't look quite a as blue natural. blue filter or a yellow filter. <laughs> exactly. When you're doing it to a raw photo, it's almost like changing yeah. the setting in camera. Yep. So this is the last session of Studio Park. No more. Okay. Back to cool B-roll. Penang is well known for beautiful murals, but did you know there's a lane for just murals? So this is a very different art gallery of sorts. It's called oh The Art Lane. The Art Lane. Yeah. Very, very appropriate name. Yeah, it's so different from the tra traditional sense that instead of artworks being hung on walls, the artwork is on the wall, like the wall itself. We've been talking a lot about RAW versus JPEG, yes. the benefit of RAW and then the, how the JPEG file size and all this. But in fact, yeah. I, I think the, the gap between RAW and JPEG is actually closing right now. There's a bit of a new kid coming into the game. Yes. And it's called HEIF, High Efficiency Image Format. It's kind of like JPEG New Edition, yes. the new JPEG. To put it in a simple one, the previous JPEG is all 8-bit JPEG, and now this is a 10-bit JPEG. Yes, and now it supports HDR. Like HDR video was a big thing, and now it's coming onto photos. Yeah. In fact, I think we first saw this kind of HEIF stuff coming onto smartphones first, and I'm really glad that it's now slowly beginning to appear on our bigger cameras. Yep, that bring me a tricky question to you. Okay. In future, do you shoot RAW or do you shoot the 10-bit JPEG? Hmm. Penang Island is truly an amazing place to be. It's certainly a melting pot of the old and the new, resulting in a place of life and culture like no other. But it's a go out, we're leaving! Uh, I was kind of sad that we might not get to take the ferry this time around, but I completely forgot that we could take the ferry out as well! Yeah, exactly! Wow. Hi, Sweet! Amazing!
So in this ferry, not only you can get off the car and enjoy all the views, they even have a snack store. And the best part is toilet. So it's a complete experience. You know, the reason I want to be on this ferry so much is because we are standing on the oldest ferry service in Malaysia. This service has been running since 1894. That's 126 years and counting. Yes. That's an incredible. Amazing. And back then, it was for human passengers only. So there were, there were no cars. You couldn't drive your car into the ferry. It Whoa, carried okay. people. It wasn't until 31 years later, in 1925, they allowed you to drive your car on board. Yes, I Bear in mind, that's still 60 years before the first Penang Bridge was built. So it was the only way to get you and your car onto the island and off the island. Oh, okay. And to, I mean this year, yep. 2020, this is definitely not something needed by the Penang Island. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the reason they built two bridges that connects the mainland to the island is so that you don't have to take yes. the boat anymore. But I'm so glad they kept it around. Yeah, rumours say this thing is not money-making business. Well then they should actually technically shut it down from a business standpoint yeah. but I'm so glad they did not do that because This is purely for heritage purpose This is something experience. else This is something else I would hate for this to not be around anymore I really hope they keep yeah. this around indefinitely So don't miss it if you pay a visit to Penang If you come to Penang, take the boat even though there's two bridges Wow, what an incredible way to leave such a beautiful island. You can literally see it just disappearing off into the horizon behind you. It's like the end of a movie, actually, which marks the end of our episodes in Penang. The only shame is we didn't get a perfect sunset. So, oh, man. <laughs> that would have been so incredible. We'll have more sunset in coming episodes, more I guess. More sunsets I'm coming soon, plenty of episodes. So, remember to subscribe and like our video. Hope you enjoyed our little trip around Penang where we covered what's raw and what's JPEG and what should you shoot. And that's Mission Instagrammable episode four. Thank you all so much for watching. Again, like, subscribe, hit the bell icon, check out both our channels, and we will see you wherever we're going next. Mission Instagrammable. We bring you to roads. More roads. Roads and roads again. Stay tuned.